this is a fun little painting for you to try if you ever want to. It's a painting of birch trees, one of my favorite. They have such this, uh, such a beautiful calligraphy with those dark lines and uh, over the white bark, uh, beautiful contrast. And they grow in such beautiful places. And, uh, so it's a fun tree to paint. Trees are so much like human beings, aren't they? They show their age and show the storms they've been through and some of the scars. Uh, uh, the bark is like a s skin, shows uh, so much of the impact of time. So I just started off doing just a simple little background, warm background, and I'm putting in now the start of the birch trees, starting with the most important one, uh, which is also the largest one, the one that's closest to you, the one that's going to, going to have the most detail in it. And one of the things that I'd like for you to notice is the uh, space between these trees is just as important as the trees themselves. Uh, those intervals and those spaces between are almost like the uh, space between notes uh, in a composition. And I th in, in this painting, I'm thinking very much about the music of the space between and the, the spaces of the actual trees. Uh, the trees themselves are really pushed towards this violet, dulled down violet, which is a complementary contrast to that warm, almost uh, dull yellow background, which is what you would find with birch trees in the fall, right? You've, you've got these warm colors. And so often shadows are the complementary color of the the color of the light so if it's a warm light a lot of times you'll have cool shadows if it's a if it's a yellow light often you'll have shadows that have a violet tint to it I'm right now talking about how I scumble with the brush. Brush work is so important. The amount of paint you have in the brush, uh, sometimes the bristles of the brush don't even touch the canvas. It's just the paint between the bristle and the canvas. Uh, but having the right amount of paint and the right consistency of paint, should it be uh, thin? Should it be more like a consistency of cream? Should it be really thick? Uh, to get the effect you want. And that just comes with time. Uh, knowing that, I, I always try to err towards the sides of, of having less paint uh, than more paint, just so I can keep the piece under control. And I, you'll notice I, I'm using my little finger to soften edges. Now, what I've started to do here is just put some of the branches in, and these are very much like notes on a scale. I, I want them to all be in the same key, right? So they're all very similar, but they're all really very different too. And that variety, that difference is what makes it interesting to look at. So what I'm doing is putting in some of the branches that are in the background first, and then I'll move to this middle ground and put branches over the top of those branches, and then I'll even put branches over the top of those branches. So you see I have branches that go behind trees. I have branches that come in front of trees. And I have branches that overlap other branches with dark over light and light over dark, thick to thin, uh, gradated from dark to light. There's a lot of ways that you can create variety here but they're very much like notes. So the space between them, I want to all be different. Um, and some of the values uh, I want 
to be different and some of the sizes I want to be different and, and that's how I compare it to the notes in a composition or a, a scale they're all again very similar but very different you can also see how what I did here is really try to bring the focus to that right hand upper third part of that bit largest birch tree uh, that's where I have the most detail so the branches that have the most detail are uh, leading to and gradating towards that part of the painting that's the most important part of the painting and it's the part that I want you to look at first and also look at last explaining how everything gradates up towards that one spot on that one burst tree so often people get lost in deep. you can saw how quickly the beginning of this painting started just quick and brush strokes and not a lot of detail and, and now that I'm putting some details into the painting you can see how that background becomes so unimportant but yet so often we'll overwork that and keep playing with it and keep playing with it and put too much detail in there uh, and it really does help just to kind of keep it loose and don't spend a lot of time on it and when you get into the detailed part then all of a sudden all that background becomes so less important Well, I'm just about finished with this painting. I hope it helps you understand a little bit more about intervals and the variety in the notes of whatever it is that you're painting and uh, whatever those elements are, how to make sure that you create gradation and variety within that repetition to make a painting interesting to look at. By the way, that last brush I'm using is a, what they call a rigger or a liner brush. It's used a lot of times for lettering. But it's a long bristle that's pretty thin. And it's a real handy brush for painting branches of trees or anything that's got kind of a calligraphy or linear feel to it. I hope you'll stick with me as I post these. And I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, Please subscribe to my channel. It helps me know that uh, I need to keep doing it. And we'll see you the next time. I want to go to drive through. How buy chips and we eat them together? Ooh, I like to kiss your face. Ketchup and mayo.